Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I've got a little uh, geometry word problem here, pretty typical of the GED. It says a certain square has an area of 2.25 square inches. What is the side length of the square? Now the great news about the GED is for just about every geometry problem that might pop up, um, we have a formula on the formula sheet which kind of gives us the step by steps of how to do a problem. So in fact, yes, if you go to look at the GED formula sheet, and if you don't have one, stop the video right now, go Google that, get one. You need to be looking at this thing as you practice. But on the formula sheet, we see the area of a square formula. Um, the area of a square formula, it's in the very first section where we have the other area formulas, says A is equal to S with this little floating two. Now you might wonder, well, what's that A and what's that S? Well, A stands for area. Uh, makes sense. It's, that's, it's the area of a square formula. And S stands for side length. Now don't be the foolish GED student who always just assumes that we're going to plug in on the right-hand side of the formula, plug in for S. Take a look at what this problem says. It says a certain square has an area of 2.25 square inches. We know the area. And then it says, what is the side length? We don't know the side length. The side length is a mystery. Okay, so in algebra, and you might say, Kate, you said we were doing geometry. Yeah, we were, and then we got a formula, and now it's just algebra. In algebra, you substitute in what you know uh, to formulas, so we know the area. It's 2.25, so it's not a mystery anymore. So now I replace the A with 2.25. But we use letters for things we don't know. We don't know the side length, so I'm going to leave that S as an S. And, of course, I'm not going to change the square because that tells me the relationship between the area and the side length. And now I let the algebra guide me. And what I see here is that I have a letter that's not alone on its side of the equation. You can see that the S is here on one side of the equal sign, and it's not alone. It's Currently, it's being squared. And so basically what algebra allows us to do is work backwards, get rid of uh, operations that we can't do. So in this case, I can't square S because I don't know what he is. So I'm going to do the opposite of S in order to get... I'm sorry, I'm going to do the opposite of squaring in order to get rid of the square. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. Now, you might say, well, how can I do that? How is that even legit? You can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm going to jump the equal sign and put the square root over there as well. And now let's see what my new equation will be. On the right-hand side, square and square roots are opposite, so they cancel. S is alone just like I wanted. I'm solving that mystery, figuring out what S is equal to. And on the left-hand side, this is the math to do. Now, a lot of you guys panic. You don't know how to do square roots by hand. That's okay. If you had anything like this particular problem on the GED, you would have your TI30XS calculator. Here's how you type this in in one of those. First, you want the square root key, but the square root is key is actually in green above the x squared button. So what you're going to need to do is press second. Anytime you need something green, you press second. And then you can press that x squared button to get the square root, and then type in 2.25 and enter. And you will see that you get the answer 1.5. Now, 1.5 what? Great question. Well, we learned that the square had an area of 2.25 square inches. And what we are looking for is just the side length here. So if the area was measured in square inches, the side length is going to be in some number of plain old linear inches. The side length is just a line, so it's going to be regular inches, not square inches. So it's 1.5 inches. Great. So this is a simple enough problem, and it's done. But I have a lot of students who struggle with this for a couple of reasons. One, they hate algebra. Or two, the decimal doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense that a square that has a side length this way of 1.5 and a side length this way of 1.5 should end up covered in 2.25 uh, squares. Okay, so I think that the best way to conceptualize this is going to be with some 
uh, graph paper. So let's go take a look at this. Um, you could tune out now if all you wanted was the algebra, but for those of you who get confused, I just want to show you a visual representation of this concept so it can make sense to you. Okay, so here is the picture of what I'm talking about when I talk about side lengths versus area. So I hope you guys will all agree that this is a square, but this is a super special square. This is what we know, call a uh, one square inch. So you're going to hear that term square inch thrown around whenever we talked about area. We're either talking about square inches or square yards or square meters or square feet. What does a square inch mean? It means a shape, a square that is one inch uh, tall and one inch wide. This, so this is a picture right here of one square inch. Now, this is what I want to point out to you, though. Decimals get funny when you multiply them. There's something students don't understand about multiplying, and it's namely this. It's the fact, and it doesn't make sense to students, that one-tenth squared is equal to one one hundredth. They say, well, how could that be? How could one tenth squared be equal to one one hundredth? So I'll just remind you what it means uh, to square one tenth. It means to take it and to multiply it by itself. And that's what it means mathematically. To square something is to take it and multiply it by itself. But you can also picture that using this diagram. So I'm going to start with this one-tenth of an inch here. What does that mean? That means that a full inch was broken into ten equal pieces. So I have that right here with my squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Each one of these little um, tick marks here along this side is, uh, is one-tenth of an inch long. So that one's one-tenth of an inch long. That one's one tenth of an inch long, and so on and so forth. That's what um, one tenth of an inch means, one inch broken into ten equal pieces. And I could do the same thing across this way. Um, and I would also get, the, you know, this one would be one tenth of an inch, and that one would be one tenth of an inch, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I want you to look right here at this piece. This itty bitty little square is one tenth of an inch by one tenth of an inch, one tenth of an inch tall by one tenth of an inch wide. But what size is it when compared to a square inch? What size is it when compared to a square? So here's my square inch, it's this whole thing here. You can see that I have one little square one little square out of how many total squares? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total squares. And there's another row of ten, so twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred. That's one out of a hundred squares. One out of a hundred squares. Right there. That piece is one out of a hundredth, or one hundredth. How we write that in decimal form? One hundredth. Okay, so I hope I just proved to you that when I take a square that's 0.1 tall by 0.1 wide, I'm going to get a hundredth of a square inch. All right, now let's take that and let's apply it to the square that we were looking at. This Because the square we were looking at was not um, one inch by one inch. We had this square that we said was I had an area of 2.25 square inches here. So I've drawn one similar to the last one that has these same dimensions. What do I mean by that? So notice this, see this 5? This is in the hundredths place. So yes, this is 2.25 uh, square inches is one way to think of it. Like this is 2 whole square inches. And that, of course, then would be two um, a tenths of a square inch. And then the five is in the hundredths place, so that would be five hundredths of a square inch.
But just like when you look at the number 225, we know that that means 220 or two tens and five ones, but it also means 225 ones. Like you could take 225 $1 bills and you would, it would be the same as having $200 bills, two tens and two fives. So I see the same thing here. I have 2.25 yes, uh, but another way that I can think of that is just 225 hundredths of an inch. And indeed, that is what I end up with. If I had this square length that was 1.5 inches across here and 1.5 inches down that way, so I'll show you what I mean. One tenths, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, ten tenths is a whole inch. Ten, um, so that's one whole inch. Then this one would be 11 tenths or 1.1. Here's 12 tenths or 1.2. 13 tenths or 1.3, 14 tenths or 1.4, so this is 15 tenths, it's 1.5 of an inch long. So I have this square that's 1.5 of an inch long, and I'll spare you all the tick marks, because I promise you it's also um, 15 of those little tick marks are 1.5 of an inch tall. And how many total little individual hundredths squares will I end up with? Remember we had said that if this is 0.1 and this is 0.1 then this is 0 0.01 of a square inch so how many total hundredths do I end up with well let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 another 15 makes 30 45 60 75 90 105 120 135 150 165 180, I'm slowing down, counting by 15s is hard. 195, 210, 225. 225 hundredths of a square inch. Ha! Ah, or another way to think of 225 hundredths is to put it so that 5 is in the hundredths place. So 2.25, 225 hundredths of a square inch. So there is a visual representation of why when we multiply, our decimals start accumulating. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.